The newspaper industry today is in big trouble. The landscape is shifting ever more quickly. Over the last few years, newspapers have suffered financially as readers have gone online. And you don't know if it's true, false, or somewhere you know, in between. Are we at a fundamental change point in the way we consume information? Journalism. One of the integral aspects of our society that has been a part of our nation since its birth. But what was once a print-dominated business is now transitioning into other mediums due to the increased usage of media formats such as television and social media. When I got into the business in 1986, print journalism was still a very strong medium and a very significant one. There's been a real um, shift away from print and and in the direction of video. They get their news from, from Facebook, from Instagram, from Snapchat, from uh, Twitter. Now what happens is you kind of get to pick the channels based on your views. And so therefore the news kind of matches the views that you already have. Journalism is by no means native to the United States, but a free press is one of the fundamental elements that our nation was built on. However, it's important to note that not every country in the world has access to the same freedoms in their laws. According to Freedom House statistics, only 39% of the world population has access to a free press. Which means that roughly 4.5 billion individuals have either a partly free or government controlled press. Advancing press freedom across the globe promotes and safeguards democracy. Without freedom of the press, there really isn't. To me, there is no press. It's just some fabricated nonsense. When you have rights, you oftentimes don't value them and therefore you quickly, you don't even realize when they're being taken away. We often take freedom of the press for granted, but we don't always do so consciously. Given that it's tucked deep in the First Amendment, surrounded by other flashier freedoms, it's no surprise that its four words of mention are often forgotten. But it's not only that, it's also because we don't really know what a life without a free press is really like. But to understand that perspective, we met with Rafael Martinez, who went from being threatened by the Cuban secret police at 12 to being nominated by President George Bush to serve as a public delegate for the UN's 57th General Assembly. Well, we, we lived in a small little town in, in Cuba, about six hours out of Havana. At age 11 is when the change of power occurred. And that first year was not real bad, but then the second year, when I was 12 years old is when everything changed and the secret police was out and all the freedoms were, were, were vanished. Uh, there was no, you know, we went from 152 newspapers in Cuba to one newspaper, but then you could hardly believe because it was just too much propaganda controlled by the government so that all the information is controlled. And uh, one television station from all the different stations that there were, it was only one. Uh, the, the restrictions in a communist country and our freedom just can't be compared because we're talking about from A to Z. It's, it's just like glorious, you know? And so it's very uh, exciting and, and something we have to protect. We have to protect the First Amendment. We have to protect all our freedoms. We cannot allow our freedoms to be even edged away because uh, that is the foundation of our country because I've seen what happens at the other end. I think that if you look through most of the strides that have been made in both this country and in the, on the planet, it was often a free press that was uh, giving light to the problems and encouraging us to do better. People are beginning to understand that if I don't value these things, they will no longer exist. It's part of uh, the fabric of the United States and it's something that as a Cuban American, as an Amer immigrant, I hold very dear because it's given allowed me to have a voice in this country. Journalism costs money. To get a story can take us hours, it can take us days, it can take us weeks, it can take months. So I compare it to, well, if you make a pizza, I don't, I don't expect to walk into your store and get a free pizza. So if you want to read and you want to stay informed, then you know, please click and subscribe. They can't just turn on the television. They've got to get out there and read not only, you know, the front page of the New York Times, but the opinion pages as well to find out all viewpoints on a certain subject. And it should be taught to our children so they understand why it is an important part of our democracy. We've become numb to, we, we stop trying to distinguish what is actually true and what's not true. And we just say, okay, that's it, we shut down. And so I'm hoping what will happen is that people will make more of an effort 
to pay attention, to demand things of their, of their legislature. When we asked ourselves, what does it mean to be an American, a plethora of things came to mind. At first, we thought of burgers and baseball on the 4th, or turkey and football on Thanksgiving. But then we realized that being an American is about so much more than national pride. It's about the freedoms that allow our country to function in a fair and just manner. And amidst the flurry of fake news and other media controversies, we often forget the important role that journalism plays in our nation's survival. But now, more than ever, we need the journalists who uphold authenticity in their reporting so that the news industry as a whole can become more reliable. And we as Americans have a role too. We need to acknowledge the important work that journalists do and appreciate the press freedoms that our country grants. We can't just live passively, unconcerned about where we get our news from. As a nation, we cannot be comfortably numb.